Hey. hey! Where did you run all these moves? Great. Hey, my brother. Yeah? <laughs> these are the moves that you find when uh -huh. you connect with nature. Uh -huh. And so with that, sometimes you're when you're around nature and you're around all this environment and greenery, uh -huh. you get so enthusiastic that all of a sudden you got to bust a move. Uh, yeah. And plus those who've been joining us here have been always commenting and saying a little something about my moves. I'm not sure I'm getting better. I was going to try like the running man, but... I don't know. Like uh, we will not. <laughs> I'll say that till next time, right? Okay. Don't worry. The, the electric slide is coming. Okay. Uh, I'll do the uh, the Michael Jackson moonwalk. <laughs> All that is coming. But greetings, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another fantastic, beautiful episode here in the Garden of Paradise, here at where we call Back to Nature Organic Farms, here in this beautiful bosom of Mother Nature, here on the African continent, in a country we call Kenya, in a country we call Moranga, and I could go on and on just saying that we're enthusiastic about where we find ourselves, and we're grateful. We do not take it for granted, and we honor every breath we're able to take we honor every second we're able to have this thing and gift that we call life welcome to another fantastic wonderful episode and like always we say we like to for those who have not yet subscribed please go ahead and join us and subscribe to, subscribe to this channel we invite you to like comment share so that these videos that we're doing and the information we're sharing can get a chance to uh, get shown or get exposed to more people and then we always start with who we are what we do you know we are keen on what we call the back to nature philosophy that the closer we are to nature the more whole happy at peace at ease we are the further we get away from nature into artificial living into GMOs into fake lifestyles we get into a state of dis-ease and the root of that's the root word of the, 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 the word disease and so we say no come back to ease come back back to nature and so with that ladies and gentlemen you always know we love to bring some dynamic powerful enlightening um, prolific um, minds in the organic space those who we highly cherish and respect their thinking the frequency and energy and vibration that they're vibrating on and have a chance to build networks because you know even when we welcome you to this channel we don't say welcome to my channel I say welcome to our channel because we're big on this collective support network system and so we're joined here by another young man I'm always excited when we find um, uh, those that are so passionate and so enthusiastic and yet at a young age and yet they have found a way to figure out and to realize that being close to nature is so very important. And so without any further ado, I would like to introduce us to, uh, to the guest here today is none other than Mr. Kennedy. Now, Mr. Kennedy, or we call him Ken, but a lot of you have said, guys, we want to know what are your real African names? So uh, with that, uh, Mr. Ken, please introduce yourself and let them know sort of what uh, the, the, the African name that you feel most best fits you. Okay. And actually, you might want to come a little closer to the camera just so that everyone can hear and you can be able to project. All okay. right. All right. Uh, my name is Kennedy Mushina. I'm uh, an organic trainer yes. and also an organic consultant. Ah, so training and consultant is yeah. your thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, training and consultation, How, what do you see is the importance? that people train organically because, and I want to say this, for thousands of years we as human beings, the only way we knew how to farm was to farm organically. It is only within the last 100, 150 years when these chemicals and stuff started that we lost. And so we now need to, in a sense, learn or retrain of what we had learned for thousands and had done thousands of years before. So explain to me why you have felt the importance of being able to train and consult in this space of organic and how is it that you came to it and got so excited and enthusiastic about the organic space? Yeah, okay. To answer your question, first of all, uh, what made me, what makes, makes me feel passionate about the training on organic and consultation about organic and all that Yes. is because there have been so many diseases in the world we have cancers, we have all sorts of these diseases brought up by 
the, the mode of convection of farming. They yes. call them the, 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 the convection of farming, the GMOs. Yes. And uh, I sort of thought, uh, how can we reclaim our nature? How can we re reclaim back our lives? How our, the, the old people used to live. They used to live 100 plus years. They used to, 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 to farm organically. Correct. They never used such chemicals that people are using. Yes. And so, what was destroyed? What, what brought the difference? Uh, during production, during production in the 19, during the the 1940s, yes, when there was World War, that's when chemicals companies start, started coming up and coming up with uh, some chemicals which were weapons, and uh, they realized they could also be used to feed the soil, mm. but they never knew what they were doing because they were punishing the coming generation. So, my passion is on organic farming. And what are my goals as a trainer? Yes. I want us to go back to nature. Go back to nature. I want us to treat our soil back to its originality. Ah, yeah. to in a sense, rehabilitate the soil, in a yeah. sense, to regenerate the soil. Yeah. And so this is when we hear these terms about, you know, regenerative agriculture or agroecological, an approach, an organic approach, others call it permaculture. Yeah. All these ways of working in harmony with nature mm -hmm. uh, is very important. And I'm happy that you're passionate about that and you train on that. And you said something is very, very important that we it was really these chemicals started to be introduced coming out of the world wars yeah. and and where they had all this chemical left over yeah. and then they somehow i don't know how they figured it out like let's <laughs> dump all this stuff in the soil and sell it as so-called fertilizers and other inputs yeah. uh, and it has done a lot of damage a lot. and not only damage to the earth but damage to people's bodies you mentioned people getting sick yeah. a lot of the lifestyle diseases are due in cause to a lot of um, the production systems the ways that we're doing it in a modern way so let me ask you being here in Kenya mm -hmm. being involved with this space I know you also uh, graduated from uh, Kenya Institute of Organic Farming That's I right. want to shout out uh, Mr. Njoroge there and Kioff have been doing a wonderful, wonderful job. I call him the, probably the grandfather of organic, uh, of organic and, yeah. uh, in Kenya. And in Africa. In, okay. Yeah. So he's been a pioneer. Yeah. Yeah. So you went to school there. You got a chance to graduate there. You now started to work, you know, in terms of ex extension, seeing different farmers, engaging, consulting. Let me know what is the reception? Uh, and is there a, a welcoming, uh, opening their minds to returning back to these practices? Because there was such a brainwashing that went into saying, no, you only have to go to this chemical, come to the agro vet and you buy this and you spray that. So now a different message is coming by people like yourself and others. Uh, what is the reception? Tell me if you don't mind sharing a little bit about that. Okay, when I started the training, when yeah. I started my extension services, yes. I only had one challenge, and a main challenge, convincing the people. Convincing the people. The people. But nowadays, yes. I got no challenge. People are becoming aware of the organic way. People are now accepting to go back to nature. Yes. Now, people are getting back to nature. I tell you, I think um, it has been that people have been pushed mm -hmm by realizing that, hey, my cousin, mm -hmm. my auntie, my uncle has high blood pressure, or has this disease or that disease, and people are now beginning to make the link that maybe it has something to do with the food. True. And what's being sprayed on the food, True. and what's being put in the food. Mm. And so in that regards, people are looking now, and they're more receptive in a sense today, and so this is very wonderful. Now, we're standing here at, in the section of our farm, um, and you might have heard if you've watched some of our videos, we talked about the importance of composting. There's a saying we have here back to Nature Organic Farms that every day is a composting day. And composting primarily is the ability to find a natural way to create inputs that will feed the soil nutrients in a natural way without the harmful uh, chemicals. So you might see in the background, and we'll walk here uh, shortly, several different heaps. For those of you who might have watched the Watermeyer video, or even a video or two, I might put it up here, I'm not sure who is inside of the screen. You can click there and see 
we had made a video when we were up top the water tower and there was only one composting heap here. Today you'll see at least six or seven. I mentioned that we want 10, 15 of these compost heap and you'll, so you'll see the progress that we've made there. So I wanted to ask you, sir, what is the importance of nutrition in the soil as food that the plants eat and for it to be a wholesome, the same way our bodies, we can take in nutrition, it could be what they call empty calories versus we can take in a very nutritious, wholesome meal. And so that's the difference maybe between like a, a natural organic uh, sort of putting nutrition into the soil versus feeding uh, empty calories uh, that might look like they're producing but these particular uh, uh, harvests, but it may, the look doesn't have the nutritional content within the fruit that we're able to get. And so please give me your perspective on the importance of nutrition in the soil for food for the plants. Okay, first of all uh, is to say... If you don't mind coming this way just okay. a little bit. Okay, very good. Uh, when did you come to nutrients in the soil? Yes. Uh, the challenges we are having now are the diseases and the pests. But you know, the problem came from us because we don't feed the soil. If you are not fed a, a balanced diet, what do you expect? You will not fight diseases. Yes. You will not repel diseases. Your immune system will be low. You are weak. So, if we add nutrients, yes, and all nutrients that are required in the soil, yes, and in organic we say feed the soil and not the crop. Mm. Yeah, so that when the crops is uh, uh, when the, the crop is planted on the soil, yes. it will be able to grow with a very strong immunity against diseases and also pests. Yes. If you go to organic farms, yes. uh, most especially those who, who practice pure organic farming, yes. and an intensive one, yes. you will find very few pests disturbing them. They use no repairance, I mean, they use no, no, no pesticides. Right, yes. Yeah, you find that the crops are growing very healthy, no diseases in the farm. So there's, there's a balance, there's a harmony, there's an equilibrium. Exactly. That nature itself knows how to keep everything in balance and in check. Just like you even got a point now. Here we go. Yeah. Just like our bodies, when we're healthy, our immune system, everything, we, we have an equilibrium internally that maintains. But when we are out of balance, not in harmony, just like our body, we get sick. The same thing, and the sickness is reflected in diseases and pests that come and attack the plants. And now we have to go find other things to come and spray versus if the soil biology was well and healthy, it balanced, would keep everything uh, balanced and harmonized yeah. so that the pests themselves, it's, nature itself can deal with pests and diseases in a way, the same way our immune system deals with exactly. keeping us alive, yeah? yeah? Nature knows how to balance itself. Wow. So stop trying to bring up your own ways to balance the nature. The nature can balance itself. All you need is to feed the soil. Wow. If, if you're benefiting from the soil, you also have to benefit it. Yes. Yeah. In uh, butter trade, what we call uh, butter trade. Give and take. Yeah, exactly. Excellent, excellent, yeah. excellent. All right. So with that, a big component of feeding the soil, building a healthy biology in the soil, is the ability to feed it uh, at least one of the. Actually, there's another. We're gonna have a discussion another day because I know you're also an expert at creating bio fertilizers and bio pesticides. Mm. So right before we talk about that, you want to say 30 seconds about. Mm what bio, bio fertilizers and bio pesticides mm -hmm. and the importance of those are? Okay, first of all, let me start from uh, bio fertilizers. Yes. Uh, bio, what, what we mean by bio fertilizers, these are fertilizers uh, which we get them from natural plants. Okay. Or from natural things. Yes. Uh, like plants. You extract uh, your fertilizers from plants. Yes. And uh, not only plants, but uh, uh, if you have an organic farm and you're using the weeds from around the organic farm, yes. th that fertilizer is organic. Uh, but uh, you are getting your weeds from a conventional farm. Yes. We no longer call that bio fertilizers. Uh, so the importance of the bio fertilizers yes. is bio fertilizer is well balanced because we get it from the nature. Okay. And we feed it directly to the to, soil. To the soil. Yeah. And now there's ways of creating these concoctions, am yeah, I right? True. So the concoctions will be made up of things like the, uh, the fungi, or Tidonia. Yeah. We talked about the Mexican marigold. True. We talked about uh, Lantana Kamara. So m several different uh, medicinal uh, herbal plants that we can extract 
certain, um, uh, in a sense, elements from them mm -hmm. that will allow us to create wonderful biofertilizers. No forgetting through the natural process. In the natural process. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So when we take a look here of a natural process that we make also a fertilizer by simply some of the elements that you find right here in nature. Those have seen our uh, as some of the animals we have here. By the way, everyone who submitted names for the, the cow, we, we have another baby on the way. So start thinking of your names again or resubmitting your names for another goat that's coming along the line. But for all the goats that you've been able to see, the cow you've been able to see, we then take that and let me grab the camera here, sir, and we'll walk around uh, briefly around this particular section that has these different compost heaps and we'll have a chance to have a discussion about the power of composting and so those have seen our cow here let me just go uh, and say hello to the cow very very quickly hey no no are you having a meal are you having something to eat how you doing how you doing how you doing there excellent so with that, ladies and gentlemen, those who have you have seen that when she goes to number one, number two, uh, the manure comes, we bring it and collect it and drive it into what we call our composting pit. Now, a composting pit, we, we add several different elements, dry material, wet material, etc., and then eventually we move it into these heaps. So here you see we have heap one, heap two, heap three, heap four, heap five, heap six, heap seven, heap eight. So we have about eight of these heaps here and we want to have about 15 more because we have a model that says every day is a composting day here on the farm, collecting all the farm waste, bringing them in this. And you'll see that we label in a sense when the process started, who's responsible for uh, in a sense uh, the process and in that every three weeks we come and we turn over the particular uh, composting heap in that regards. We have the covers because direct sunlight is not necessarily best when we're doing uh, this compost. As a matter of fact, that's why we built uh, this particular shed that you see here uh, actually for uh, compost. If you came here a week ago, you would have seen it was filled there and we uh, have a chance once it's ready from here uh, we then move it there but let's look at a heap like this and i'm going to ask uh, Ms. Ken here to give us a little bit of insight uh in a sense to how, what goes on in these particular heaps now mr ken mm -hmm. first before I, we move into the specifics yep. give me your uh reasoning as to the importance of composting mm -hmm. on an organic farm. Why should one engage in composting? Uh, when we do our trainings, first of all, yes, uh, this is actually the first thing we train people to do. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is to ensure that uh, the cost of, 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 of fertilizer or manure production yes. has gone down. Because if you look at, uh, at this heap, uh, you'll find uh, we have only natural available things, the yes. things that sell on the farm. And uh, the other thing is that uh, this process is organic. And uh, I'm insisting so much on organic. So uh, during this process, uh, all this is broken down to give us manure, very nutritious manure. And uh, when we take it to the farm, yes. the rate of intake, of the manure to the soil, yes, is it takes longer. Ah. So this kind of manure will remain in the soil for a very long time, compared to those fertilizers people go to get in agrovets. Yes, and so, the rain comes and it washes exactly. it away. This is the, like a slow release in a yeah, sense. The yes. other thing is that it improves the structure of the soil, and so as you you continue using the manure, the healthier the structure of your soil and the healthier the soil and the more fertile the soil is. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Okay, so very good. I'm happy this is the first thing that you typically train on because obviously you know the importance of that. So in here, let's talk about some of the components of what make up a compost heap and the process. So in here, obviously we've brought, I just showed us where the cows 
are and we have some of our goats in there just briefly let me see if I can uh, they're right along eating away and then they are uh, the urine go to the bathroom just like the cow does and so we then start to collect it so we say that um, a fundamental ingredient for a recipe for composting is manure yep. let me know the importance of manure as one of the ingredients for a good compost uh, manure is already uh, manure has got some uh, microorganisms in it okay that helps in the loading process mm. so it, it also quickens the the, the the process at the same time manure has got some nutrients in them yes that we need to boost our heap with ah. yeah, because we need but we need all nutrients available in our heap yes yeah okay so that's the importance of the bolea what yeah. we'll call the swahili bolea yeah. okay so now you come you mix the manure yeah. in okay. with green matter yeah, we have and green then matter. dry matter yeah. explain why those two are important to mix in to the manure as you're building up all the different uh, ingredients and components for a composting heap okay we have the dry matter Dry matter is, uh, we have dry matter, let me start with the green matter. Okay. Uh, the green matter uh, has got a lot of nitrogen. Yes. And so, when you heap it in your heap, you are improving the nitrogen content needed by the soil in your heap. Yes. And that's why you find you also have green manure. You, you after, after doing some several practices in your farm and you have got some weeds, instead of throwing them away, yeah. use them as uh, green manure. Very so good. this green matter here uh, will be able to fix nitrogen in your heap. Wonderful. Not only the nitrogen yes. and some other nutrients in the, in the heap, but the main thing here is... is ensuring our hip has got enough nitrogen. powerful nitrogen okay yeah. very good uh, all right so you mentioned the green matter dry matter then complements mm -hmm. the green matter in that regards yeah one you want to say something on that or or, or let's just say this because uh, I'm actually looking here at the time uh, okay I think we have a few minutes here but then we then add some soil in a sense top soil onto this mm -hmm. we then add some ash and so you can, you know, maybe say a few words on ash. And then we also here in our farm, we add effective microorganisms yeah. that have the bacteria and fungi uh -huh. in the sense that we have actually cultured and made uh -huh. here on the farm to even quicken the decomposition uh, uh, process for our compost. So yeah, maybe say a word or two about ash, topsoils, uh, yeah. you know, maybe adding some effective microorganisms to, to enhance the process. Yeah. So yeah. You already said it to enhance the process. <laughs> so let me start with the topsoil. Yes. Uh, uh, particularly the topsoil. Yes. Uh, saying the topsoil, we are not, uh, we, are, we are very keen on saying the topsoil. Okay. It's because uh, if you look at this soil, uh, you, if you pick this soil yes. from the ground, you'll find some uh, some moving, some moving animals, let me call them microorganisms. Yes. And they are very important because they, they help in the decomposition process. Mm. They feed on this green matter, Yes. they die, and they also become part of the compost. Mm. You got me? So, so they, they it's feed very, on... It's, it's very important yes. to water the topsoil to be able to, to quicken the, the, the process okay because these uh, microorganisms will eventually feed on all this and after a few weeks if you have observed yes the, the, the entire the entire heap will go down correct this is because these things have been feeding on the compost ah yeah yes and now it gets down uh, they die they have a, a, a short life span okay they die and become part of the compost yes when it comes to ash Ash will help in fixing calcium in the heap. The calcium, okay, yeah. yes. Calcium is needed by the soil. Isn't Absolutely. It? it also neutralizes the acidity. Very good. We heap. did a video about alkalinity and acidity exactly. in the soil. So, uh, yeah, okay, very good. The balance, pH, the pH yeah, balance. The pH. Very good. Yeah. The calcium is very important for it. Okay. Yeah. Now we add uh, uh, some effective microorganisms as well uh -huh. in liquid. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you've already mentioned some of the microorganisms that you can find in the soil. Yeah. 
Um, I'm not sure if some of your methods you've used sprinkling or pouring in microorganisms. Okay. Yes. What I would say about that, it's not compulsory, yes. but some farmers do it. Yes. Uh, and its purpose is also the same as the microorganisms we find in the soil. Very good. Making the process of decomposition. Of decomposition. Uh, but if you don't, you do, if you can't, you are not in a position to move, to prepare it. Yeah. You can just use water. You sprinkle water here. Yes. And ensure that your your heap is never dry. Yes. Neither is it very wet. Too wet. Yeah. Very good. Now, actually, that's funny because now we're talking about if we look next here, we do have these covers, mm -hmm. and these covers provide provide certain protection, yeah. uh, and it provides protection from maybe too much water, too much sunlight. Speak about the process of once you have your heap rolling, turning the heap over, covering the heap to allow some of it. So, so explain to me what um, the process involves. Uh, once now you have all the ingredients, the components are there. Yes, and what's first of all? Go ahead. If you recent Kinley, when I was starting, I said this green matter add nitrogen into the heap. Yes, and nitrogen goes very fast with the sun. Oh. So when your heap is directly yes, uh, directly heat, then, then then your heap will be will lack the nitrogen, will have the deficiency of the nitrogen. It will lose the nitrogen, yeah, it will evaporate. Exactly. And now the other thing uh, why we cover is to prevent too much wetness in the heap. I said here we need to sprinkle some water and not too much water just to maintain the, 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 that moisture. Yes. For the survival of the microorganisms inside the heap. It, okay. Because when it's too dry, the microorganisms then they are not, they, they die and yes. the process becomes a weak process. Wow. Yeah. So all those components of oxygen, water, the elements of nature that we need are always also for growing plants also needed for when we are making a compost heap uh, in this regards that will then produce. Now, after period of turning it, why is it important to turn over your heap? Say some people turn it every two weeks, other every three weeks, other every four weeks. What's the important to rotate the heap over the course uh, of a three, three months or four months of it getting ready because uh, some people say uh, compost heap can be ready within eight weeks yeah, others true. say nine weeks yeah. so give us um, and, and then you turn it over every three weeks mm -hmm. on your way there so give me some insights on that time period and the importance of turning over okay first of all is to ensure that nutrients are well contributed okay. distributed in the in the in the compost yes and the other thing is uh, if you open this heap if you have not turned it yes. you will find some uh, some parts are rotten others are not rotten yes. so you need to turn so you need to take the the, the, the first layer yes uh, which you pressed at the bottom yes. needs to come come uh, in a, it comes up so up. you want an even balanced decomposition you don't want it decomposing at the bottom more than it does the top exactly. you know etc you want to make sure it, it happens in an even balanced way yeah fantastic fantastic okay well with that ladies and gentlemen i just want to say it has been a wonderful wonderful time in this particular section of our um composting area every day here at back to nature organic farms every day is a composting day champion Look at the little champion is out. See how big he's got? Oh, now you want to run away? <laughs> he's the only one that's able to get out there. He's too small. Hey, you coming to say hi? You're coming to say, oh boy, he's gone. Anyways, with that ladies and gentlemen, yes. As we wrap up here in this particular section, I just want to say uh, to my good brother and friend here, actually most likely we're going to be working uh, together to um, develop some of the elements that we had talked about in regards to the Adopt an Afri Organic African Farmer initiative that will be uh, up and coming. Uh, a lot of great work, a lot of great networks, a lot of things that are happening behind the scene. As a matter of fact, um, he was with us a couple of days ago as we were working on that opening up a uh, Back to Nature sort of um, organic experience um, market place that we talked about there that's uh, going to be a premier market in Nairobi and so lots of great things that are coming down the road so I want to say thank you to each and every one of you guys um, thank you for following this particular journey 
don't forget like comment share remember closer you get to nature closer nature comes to you and uh, any last words sir uh, nature is punishing us wow nature is punishing us because we punished it wow yeah, and that's why you can find all these happening, all diseases and whatever. So yes. It's because uh, we disturbed ourselves. Yes. We harassed our soil. Yes. And now we need to seek forgiveness. Through going back to nature, practicing organic practices, and with that, maybe the nature will have some mercy on us. You got it. <laughs> have some mercy on us. And for the next generation, we want to make sure that we're responsible and leave something for them, not 